brother and for DZ. Y'all know the brother used to be around the corner on Malcolm X Boulevard. In case y'all been looking for my brother, he is no longer there. You see where he's at. He's right in the block now. You see my brother say cool over there. You see the streets over there, the park, the Paramount. This is where the brother's at, right here. So I'm here to interview my brother because I know he have a new book out now that a lot of y'all don't know about. So let's let's go, my brother. Talk to us, man. Give us some information on that. I um, first I want to give a shout out. I have back out. Spiritual Warriors Are Healers. This is the newest edition. So those people before uh, the new edition, I've added a couple of extra things to it. Revised the last chapter. Added a couple of more uh, charts. So I'm teaching all my classes from this particular book. So it's in 18 universities now. And we've put together, we've put over 20,000 onto the street. So I'd like to say thank you and do I to the public for patronizing me and buying Spiritual Warriors or Healers. How that book been out so far? Uh, it was originally out in 2003. Okay. So that's 16, what, 14 years. Mm -hmm. So that's good. My latest book is Minchu Hotep in the Spirit of the Magi. And if you can see, you see the Magi warrior right there on the cover. He is the founder of the 11th Dynasty, the second golden age. What makes this book important is that He's as important as Narmer, who united Upper and Lower Kemet in the First Dynasty. Well, when Kemet went into chaos after the Sixth Dynasty and there was a breakdown in the government, it went for 150 years where foreigners came in, Asiatics, Europeans, all types of people infiltrated ancient Egypt. But Menchu Hotep, coming from the south, from Aswan and uh, Karnak and, and um, Waset, the capital was in Waset. This family coming from ancient Kush, united Upper and Lower Kemet again. That means they had to go down, they had to defeat the Hyksos, kick them out, build the wall so that the Europeans could not come back in in the Asiatics. And it took them over 200 years before they were able to come back into ancient Kemet. But he revised the spiritual system. His age is called the classical age of ancient Egypt, where he made the scribe one of the most important positions in ancient Kemet. During the first golden age, that's dynasty one through six, really only the priests could read. The common people could not read. But during Minchu Hotep, he made public education almost uh, mandatory where he raised the level of consciousness of all the people. And the best writing that exists in ancient Egypt today is still during his time, the 11th, 12th dynasty. This is called the classical age of ancient Kemet. Uh, I take you through an initiation. So some people say, well, Infodisi, how could this help me in the past? I'm always amazed when people ask me that. Because everybody else is using our stuff, and we're not asking that. But when, why should we use it? Because you're, being, you're getting your butt kicked. That's why you should use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you should use it. Uh -huh. Symptomatic thinking. If somebody has come up with a system to oppress you, you need to come up with a system to unoppress you. Right. Uh, and you got to go back to the source that they're using. So therefore, this book will help you. Minchu Hotep goes through an initiation as a magi. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. I've, I've come in contact with a lot of our African brothers from the continent. And most of them are Muslim. But when I talk about the pyramids, and I talk about Aset and Heru, have you ever heard of this? They never heard of it. And they are closer to the pyramids than we are over here. Why do you think that is? They don't want no parts of that, brother. Well, first of all, ignorance is just not synonymous to Africans in America. You see, when the Western world colonized Africans, we were ripped out of Africa and brought here, and those Africans that were already here were brainwashed, and they all got thrown into one pot. Okay, Africans on the continent were colonized by the same Europeans. In 1885, every country in Africa was colonized by Europeans except for Ethiopia. Let me say it again. By 1885, every country on the African continent was colonized by Europeans. That's the British, that's the French, 
That's the Dutch, that's the Portuguese, that's the Spaniards. So they colonized and they put in the same system of exploitation and brainwashing in, in Africa than that we have here. In fact, in some cases, it's even worse. Even right now, most African countries don't learn their subjects through their language. They're being taught algebra, French, German, English through a European language. I believe if you go to Est of Swahili in Eastern Africa, it's one of the only African languages where all subjects are being taught, you know, to Africans. But now uh, we're starting, some Africa's beginning to wake up. You see this consciousness that's in America is waking everybody up. Everybody, yeah. So Africans in Brazil are beginning to wake up. Africans on the continent is waking up. Right now we're doing a project in Ghana and, and the Ghanaians are waking up. They want to teach their subjects with a Shanti tree. Since 90% of the people speak Shree, why are you learning everything in English? You kicked the British out, you got independent in 1957. But neo-colonialism still exists. In fact, some countries that don't even speak French are now going to implement French. Because the Europeans still got his foot up their butt. And so we as Africans have to unite worldwide. So in my book, Minchu Hotep, I, I put stress on this word magi. Can you see it here? Magi. Magi were elite warriors who were the protectors of the sacred of the royal family. They were the magistrate. They were the judges. They were the people that took care of ancient Kemet and kicked foreigners out. They are the predecessors of the elite warriors. So when you see the ninja in Japan, they're imitating the magi. When you see uh, the Shaolin temple in China, they're imitating the priests of the Magi. They set up the first, and their combat system is called the Manchu combat system from the Necha Manchu. So, um, Menchu Hotep is going through a spiritual initiation before he becomes the king. So, I take you on that journey. So, now you see how he got himself together. You can see how you can get yourself together. You see how he dealt with his enemy. Now you know how to deal with your enemy. Because the conditions are still somewhat the same. It might be 4,000 years later, 5,000 years later. But the same conditions are almost there. So you go through an initiation. This is, a, this is book one. And during the summer, a book two will come out. Because he ruled for 54 years. So this book deals with about his first 20 years of rule. And the next book will deal with his 34 years of rule. Let me ask you. Um, we dealt with science in the Metuneta. We dealt with science in ancient Kemet. Right now, on social media, the talk has come back up about flat earth. I know you probably heard of it. I know you probably heard of it. Yeah, we know it's foolishness, but I'm saying, have we dealt with that science yet? Is there anything in the Metuneta where our ancestors already done proven that the earth is round. Now this whole thing is coming up again with flat earth. Okay, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that, okay. But show me another flat planet. Show me a flat sun, show me a flat star. When you can show me something else that's flat out there. You see, the ancient Kemet U, when they built the pyramids, already understood the circumference of the earth. Circumference, right. meaning a circle. Right. Not a flat, not a half. Okay, all right, so I need to make that clear. We are, we understood the orbit. In order to get uh, the 24 hours, that means you have to be orbiting in a circle, not a, a donut, I mean, not a half arc. Right, right. Okay, so people need to be able to deal with that. Okay, all I have to say is show me something else that's flat that's out there. Okay, that you can prove. Other than that, I want to deal with the science. In the pyramid, they understood pi, they understood phi, they understood the circumference, they understood the golden means, the cycle of the universe. And their temples were based upon that because it was based upon nature. Nature, keen observation of nature and pure science, not speculation. Okay, so I want to make that clear. Right. Will you ever write a book? that can appeal to the babies, to the young kids, like the young kids that was just here. Kid, will you ever write a book? I know you had cards and all that stuff. You still got them. Okay, that's what's up. I'm going to say no on that. My job is to teach the parents. 
Okay, and they teach And they teach the babies. I teach teachers. Oh. So I can teach the teachers who teach the babies. In fact, that's what they're bringing me to Ghana to do now. I'm doing a workshop in September where all the Afrocentric teachers are coming to the University of Legon and I'm doing for three weeks workshops on understanding, you know, remember I talked about master the mineral domain? Uh -huh. So I'm gonna be teaching crystals, gemstones, mineral, which Africa is rich. And everybody's raping Africa, and Africa don't even use it. I have Africans come by here every day saying, oh, I got this in my backyard. I didn't know it was worth anything. Okay, so we have to teach the mineral domain. Then the plant, we used to be herbalists. Everybody's grandmother used to have a remedy for everything. Now we think Rite Aid got the remedy. Okay, okay. We don't know nothing about herbs. So I'm going to teach herbology. Okay, and understanding the herbs. That's the second domain. The third domain is the animal domain. Animals are not our food source. We shouldn't be eating them. They're not our pets. They're not to be enslaved. You don't want to be enslaved. So why are you enslaving them? And they were here before you, so you know they weren't our food source. Okay, all right. So I'm teaching, learn the lessons that animals have to teach us. That's why these Neturu have animal type heads, because they have characteristics that we need to learn. Okay, so that's important, you know, like the falcon, uh, you know, the ibis crane, uh, all of these, the lion, if by watching them. Types of uh, traps. Whatever is put out there, they eat it up. They go for it, and they, you know they don't want to hear what you're talking about. They, it's, I'm not going to say they're not ready. They just don't want to hear. We have to uh, uh, come together among ourselves and not worry about what that white man is doing. We have to talk about building our own institution. You know, not trying to befriend the white man. You want to get with the white man, you can't even get with each other. Right, right. You, you know what I'm saying? Right Our right big now. thing is a language barrier because you come from this place and that, oh, so you, you're different and I want to be half of this and I'm a half of that. You're half of everything, but you're, you're, you're not a whole of yourself. So it's hard for me, or, or not for me, because I know my history, okay? I'm not saying I'm a, a, a history uh, 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 with my uh, Egypt and Ethiopia, so much, but I know of, you of know it. I know it exists. I know my father was from the island, and he always called this place, for this United States, adopted home. He always said Africa was his home, original. And he said, this is not my mother tongue that we're speaking. But you cannot tell that to us. To, to so that that. Yeah. No, because yeah. the, the parents are just as ignorant. Okay, they float in with everything, everything, everything. And ma'am, that's why the emphasis is on teaching parents. Teaching parents and teaching the young adults who are the future leaders. So I have to get them, okay? So if I can get them to start, re you see, whoever controls the minds of our children controls our future. Okay, so that has to be clear. We're talking about liberation, we're marching, but we're not talking about changing the school. And listen, just African studies is a band-aid on the thing. It's not really changing anything. So you're still indoctrinated with a European, so you learn a little African history, you get a little degree in Afro-American history, but meanwhile, they still own all the buildings, they run the economy, you still buying everything from them. We have to change the paradigm. So that's what I'm trying to teach. Symptomatic thought. What are the symptoms that will lead us towards total liberation? That means controlling our food, Controlling our clothes, controlling uh, the employment. We have listen. In 1817, that's 200 years ago, we only employed one percent of our population. This is 2017. 200 years later, guess what? We only employ one percent of our population. That means that if you want a job, you have to go to your oppressor. And they're not teaching you to be an entrepreneur. No. You can have a degree in business, an MBA. And that's just teaching you to be middle management for European corporations. Okay. And I tell them that, what you want to do, getting all these letters behind your name, I said, he's, you're not getting the same teaching what he teaches to his white people. Okay, because when they come out with the letters and everything, they are owners. They don't teach you to go on your own and own your own and everything like that. I teach okay? my college students this. I say I have two types of students in here. I have one type of student who is learning so that they can get a job. 
I have another type of student who's learning so they can be the boss. Okay? And unfortunately, most of us are learning to get a job. And if you just, a job keeps you just over broke. And you might have a jackass of a boss. And if you got both of them, you in serious trouble. So we have to change the paradigm. African people have to, we have to be not only entrepreneurs, we have to be builders. We have to be, we have to begin to do what I call cottage industry. And that means in the manufacturing stage. You see, during black history, we talk about all these black inventions, but we don't manufacture none of them. So other people are getting rich off of our stuff. So we have to begin to manufacture. Right. That becomes extremely important. So African people who are listening to this, you're learning your history, you're learning your culture, but you're learning so that you can be the captain of your ship. The captain of your ship. Most of y'all are in the baggage department and don't even know where the ship is going. Okay? So it's important for you to come up, get some lessons on how to run your own ship. Learn your mission, learn your destination, and keep pride in African. No matter where we are, Africans on the continent, Africans in the diaspora, we have to have a love. Dr. John Henry Clark said, we have no friends in the world. Everybody has abused us. Our best friend has to be us. And it doesn't matter what shade of black we happen to be. Okay? We are all African people and we have to come together. We got to stop fighting over religion. That was thrown there to help divide us. Okay? Uh, America is a nation and they don't care what religion you are. Well, now they kind of do, but <laughs> up into Trump, they didn't care, okay. But, so, but, right, we have to understand that we have to come together with a common goal. And the common goal is for African people to be able to control their own destiny, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And so hopefully people, y'all will gravitate towards my two books, get my newest version of Spiritual Warriors Are Healers, teaching you how to be captain of your ship, and my latest book, Menchu Hotep, who's taking you through an initiation on how to become a spiritual warrior. Now, one last question on that. How do they get the book? Let's say somebody's in Philadelphia and they're watching the video, or they're in Atlanta, or they you know, all over the world. How do they get the book? They can go on my personal website, www.mfundishichahutimasmadunetcha.com or they can just go on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and order the book. It'll come straight to me still. So now it's just it's a hardcover, a paperback, and an ebook. And what that book go for? The hardcover is thirty dollars. The paperback is twenty dollars. And the ebooks, I think they have a set price. They're like three ninety nine, four ninety nine. I'm not quite sure. And my new book, if you buy it from me, is forty five dollars. Um, Barnes and Noble, it's eighty nine ninety nine, or Barnes, you know. So I mean forty nine. I'm sorry, forty nine ninety nine. This one, this one, yeah, this is 45. No, Barnes and Noble. No, he said if you get it from Amazon. him, it's cheaper. Oh, okay. But if you get it from Barnes and Nobles, you're gonna pay a little more. Yeah. Uh, no, you can. Have any questions before I close it up? Come on, man, the youth in here, get him. Come on, you got him. Bring the queen over here. Yeah. Come on. So, um,. We're just trying to study the, um, the ancient Kemet um, lifestyle and things like that, trying to figure out how to um, go about it and things like that. What's a good book that we could, um, what's like one of the first good books that we can get just to give us the basics, straight up? <laughs> that right there? Right. Okay. See, you don't, hey, tell them why. You don't want to unlearn. See, what happened, you get books by the Egyptologists, right? right? They're going to they're gonna tell you everything in Greek. They're going to say Horus, Isis, they're going to give you everything. Then you, you, you get excited and then you get into the African Senate thing and you realize, wait a minute, those aren't even the real names. So in here I give you all the real names. My chapter two, you see when I used to go to Egypt with Dr. Ben, Dr. Ben said we have to stop using these Greek names. So I teach you my chapter two, if you look here, just, you see, I give you the picture 
I tell you the name Geb, and then I show you how to write it in the Madhu Netcha. Then I give you the definition, and then I give you a hymn. How did the ancient Kometa U look at this? So it's not just Infundishi's word for it. So I do this for every Netcha room. Right. Uh, chapter 3 is dealing with uh, Ma'at, truth, justice, righteous, harmonious balance. Chapter 4, spirit. Chapter 5, spirituality. People claim they spiritual and don't know nothing about spirit. That's right. Spirit permeates everything. That's right. You know, so you claim to be spiritual, but you're not following any spiritual rules. Crazy. Yeah, you know, so so that's what I do here. Can I do something else? Yes. Um, um, I've been hearing a lot about this flat earth thing. How, how did the commissions, <laughs> what did they think about that? What did they think about the... Um, that was it. You missed okay. it. I already asked him. Oh, right. man. Uh, it's like flat bars. It's okay. like flat stars. Okay. So show me something else. I told you that's flat. all over media okay. right now. That's confusing. Wait, 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 wait. Let me say something. This is to... So Y'all have to understand. Every time we get on point, every time we get on point and we start to win the minds of our people, somebody throws a monkey wrench in the, fir you know, in the engine to jam things up. So when we got people starting to get to Madhu Netcher, you have a few clowns talking about can't nobody speak to Madhu Netcher. When we're reading it fluently, I'm translating the walls. We, you know, and the Europeans are translating. Okay, now, so that was just thrown out there. It's like they were almost paid agents. Now we're trying to go back into our science. So this is something new. So if we spend all our energy on whether the Earth is flat, meanwhile you still got a foot up your bar behind. Meanwhile, you still don't have a job. Meanwhile, you still don't control your educational institutions. Meanwhile, you still don't control your health care. You see? So you're being sidetracked. The idea is Pan-Africanism or Paris bump the flat earth. Whether the earth is flat or round, we need to control our destiny. But check this out, Infidizi. All we got to do is ask ourselves, if the earth is flat, then how does the water stay on earth? You see what I'm saying? If the earth is flat, how does the water stay here? Y'all understand what I'm saying, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but I don't even spend a whole lot of energy on that because that's a sidebar. That's to distract you. So you trying to wonder about that, and now you're not developing yourself. Okay, so the emphasis on the, being the captain of your ship, okay, and your ship is going to sail around the earth whether it's flat or not. Right. <laughs> but that's another thing about our people. They are easily to be distracted. Anytime if they, that white man see you going in the uh, right direction, yes. he throws some another thing up there and distract you from what you, uh, you you know whatever direction you going in. So we are very easily distracted a lot of time. It's so many obstacles that up there, and a lot of time is there. Do you ever heard of the saying, seeing and not seeing, yes. or hearing and not hearing? Mm -hmm. This is going on a lot with our people, and I'm, I'm very disgusted. I'm 72 years old. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed. I felt that when uh, we were enslaved and everything, they did better than what we're doing today. They own up land. They was governors and everything like that. Ma'am, during that time, we were trying to get free. Uh -huh. We're not trying to get free now. We think we're free. Exactly. We were always trying to get home to Africa. Now we got money and we don't want to go home. <laughs> you know, think about that. Yes. So, and let me say something. Right now, everybody wants to go to Africa. Africa is the new frontier. The Chinese are there. The Europeans are still there. They haven't went no place, okay? They're raping it of its mineral worth, okay? And Africans in America, Africans in the diaspora don't want to go home. Where home is where it's at. You don't have a home here, really. I mean, watch, gentrification. Uh, I think Claude Anderson just put out a tape. We're talking about five ways we're being killed, assassinated, right here in America. Our home is welcoming us. When I was in Ghana in March, I think 50 African Americans got citizenship in Ghana. When I, I spoke at the University of Lego, and about 50 or 60 African Americans came out to hear me speak, who are living in Ghana, and they're all kind of doing some business. The land is there waiting for you, my brothers and sisters. We're doing a project now. We have a farm in, in Ghana that's over 300 acres. So we're starting to produce. We're doing things. We're not talking about it. I'm not trying to have people send me some money, and I don't have nothing to show for it. 
we're doing things, okay? So let me go back to this last point here. We talked about how easily we can be sidetracked. Right. In the book, Minchu Hotep has to be extremely focused because he's going to be the next ruler of ancient Kemet. There's a lot of things that come to try to sidebar him, but he is going through an initiation and he stays focused. He knows his mission. And we as Africans, the problem is, brother, we don't have a mission. Remember, we're not the captain of our ship and we don't have a mission. If you don't have a mission, then any old thing will do. Anything. My mother said, if you don't have if something, if you don't have a goal in plan, then you'll fall for anything. And so the, the newest thing comes up. I remember when I was in college, people used to get their, uh, their major by what paid the most money. Not what skills you had, what pays the most money. I'm going to be a gynecologist. You don't even know what that is, bro. You know? <laughs> but they get 100000 a year, you know. Okay, all right. So we have to get focused. Africans in America, Europeans are focused about controlling your destiny. They control your education. They control your food. They control the trends. We have to get focused and can take control of every aspect of our life. We have to start wearing our own clothes. We have to start manufacturing our own. Oh, I, I usually have my red, black, and green sneakers on. Okay. <laughs> we, from, the, from the hair to the tip of your toes, we have to be in control of everything that we knew. We got to support black farmers in the south. We're losing land, Africans running to the city. The city ain't gonna have nothing for us. We already know that now. We need to be running back to the farms. We gotta take control of our life. This is concrete stuff, y'all. Concrete. So you worrying about the flat earth and you ain't eating and you ain't got no, you're not planting anything. Okay, all right, so people, concrete. Well, ever since I've known you, I've always seen you in your in your clothes, brother, your African, and I've known you for years, for decades. So I always seen you in your um, suited and booted, in your wardrobe. So now let me ask you this: Hey, how you doing? The ancient Kemites, they was not vegetarians. Was they vegetarians, or was they going into being to become vegetarians? That concept of vegetarian wasn't known, but. 95% of the people only ate fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains. You only ate meat during a celebration or a harvest or something of that nature. So 90% of the people didn't. And the idea of the cow being sacred and the India and stuff not eaten came from ancient Kemet. The Het Haru, the great cow and stuff. Okay, if you look at um, people like the Maasai, they don't eat cattle every day, but they raise cattle. Okay, but they don't eat meat, that's just a special occasion. So 90% of the people in Kemet were vegetarians without the concept of vegetarian. Oh, okay, I got what you're saying. Okay, they basically ate off from the land, vegetables like that. And so I need, but people today, we know if, just take a view of the meat industry, the chicken industry, the fish industry. You don't want no parts of that. If you want to raise your consciousness, so you can't be here talking about African spirituality with a pork chop sandwich in your hand. Okay? There's a contradiction there. You got to be consistent. And I need to say to my brothers and sisters, raise your spiritual vibration. You're talking about ancient Kemet and every other word come out your mouth is a curse word or a foul word. That's low vibration. Raise your vibration. If you want to talk about something powerful as ancient Kemet, then you're supposed to be dealing with ma'at. Other than that, it's bogus. Okay, we got a lot of bogus people folk posing as ancient Kemet with low vibration. That's not what the people, you heard this young brother and young sister, flash it on them. They trying to get into Kemet, you don't need to be on a low vibration. You want to raise your vibration. So that means building good character. We got a lot of people profess, professing ancient Kemet and they got bad character. That's true. Flash it one more time on me here. I said we got a lot of people teaching about ancient Kemet and they got bad character, foul mouth, low vibration. So you might have some knowledge, but that's still bogus. You're not practicing what you preach. You're not practicing Ma'at. The center of ancient Kemet is Ma'at. 
So brothers and sisters, young people who are listening to this, don't be following anybody who got bad character. That's going to lead you to have bad character. Let me ask you this. Why am I the only one asking questions? Come on, y'all. <laughs> okay. Now, for the young people, right, that might see this, that might see that. What's going on here? Y'all y'all celebrating and worshiping animals. animals. What's that all about? Can you really clear that up for them? Remember I said first learn the mineral domain, right. then I said learn the plant domain, right. then I said learn the animal domain. Well, everybody who's making that claim is ignorant of the animal domain. Ra here, like Haru, is, is trying to show you that they understand the animal domain. And the, the animals, certain animals have characteristics that we need to embrace. For example, the king wanted to show how powerful he was. So he used the pelican falcon, who flies faster than any creature on the planet, 285 miles per hour. He, is, he has no rivalry in the sky. A falcon eagle can pick up a ram from a mountaintop and throw him off. Yes, I saw it. Okay, right. Yes. They can attack wolves. They hunt down wolves. They, they have no right. Their only predator is man. That is a peregrine falcon, the fastest animal on the planet. Well, our falcons are our fastest animals. They can dive at speeds over 230 miles per hour. The only reason we don't know exactly how fast they can go is because the equipment that reads their speeds only goes up to 230. Wow. But they have some really special and strange adaptations to be able to do that. So imagine diving at 200 miles an hour, your lungs would probably blow up. So yeah. they have that little bone inside the nostril there, if you oh, see yeah, that see little that. bony tubercle. Mm -hmm. And that acts just like the cone in a jet engine. It breaks up the flow of the air so that it doesn't rush into their lungs. And when man got a gun, <laughs> okay, other than that, so the king wanted to show you how powerful he was. This guy can go underwater. That means he can calculate the speed of a fish. The bend of light, go 20 meters under the water, capture the fish in his tie lines, and come out dry. This is a struggle he's destined to win. Come out dry. Yes. Let me make this last statement here on the, on the falcon. Every creature on the planet, when there's a storm, seeks shelter. The falcon, the hawk, and the eagle is the only creature that flies above the storm. Do you understand that? Yes. So there's someone you hire. So now the king is saying, that's like me. Right. So I fly over adversary. You know, adversaries. I fly over that. I don't let nonsense like the flat earth get in my way. I fly over that type of nonsense. Okay? The dive bomb. The attack begins slowly, then gradually picks up speed. Its wings tucked in. The Falcon is approaching 200 miles per hour. It is now the fastest animal on the planet. Against this super-powered speed, the pigeon is defenseless. It's tough to hide from an attack like that. All right, so that's an example. Powerful, brother. Bassett the cat, for example, now it's talking about, you notice the cat is independent. You can't be dragging a cat around on the lease. He's not going for that. So Sekhmet, which was uh, the daughter of Ra, which represents the vicious part of woman, this was supposed to show the kind part. Dance, adornment, beautification. So that all the women have both sides. Okay, brother, so there's the Sekhmet side, but you gotta cater to the Basset side. Okay, so we're trying to show this beauty and adornment. The domestication of cats was first done in ancient Kemet. Okay, and so we're showing that animals can show us how to be independent. They can show us how to be great hunters. 
Like the king, the lion is the king, not because he can beat everything, because he's the smartest fighter. He's the smart. Three or four lions can take down an elephant. But they don't go running after a strong bull elephant. They get one to sit this off right. the side, you know. They're smart. That's why they're the king. And they have heart. They have no fear. So therefore, a warrior is learning how to have no fear by watching certain animals. There's a, you can go on YouTube, there's a leopard, the high priest wears a leopard skin. Right. They shows leopard diving in the water, attacking a crocodile. That's right. Here in the Pantanal wetlands of Brazil, even feared predators can't relax for long. Spotting its prey from the riverbank, this jaguar silently swims towards a caiman basking in the sun. Exploding from the river with ferocious speed, the jaguar ambushes the eight-foot reptile before it has time to react. In a clinical kill, the cat sinks its teeth and claws into the back of the unsuspecting crocodilian before whisking it away with astonishing ease. Yep. That's how fierce these cats are. So the ancient chemist, the priest, wanted you to see that I got it going on. So when I became a high priest, we had to go and hunt down the leopard and you had to kill the leopard. You had to pray first, kill the leopard so that you can transform his energy into you. So you see, so we're not just wearing animal heads because we don't have nothing else to do or we're worshipping the animal. We see something powerful in that animal that can be manifested in the human body. And it will bring out the best in you because guess what? When you're in the womb of the woman, you go for a metamorphosis. You almost go through all the animals that exist on the planet. You go from a, a fish to the amphibian to the mammal, finally to human being. And then once you go through puberty, your pineal gland is open. Now you go into a spiritual being. And so we're all, we can manifest all the energy on the planet. That's why we're supposed to be nature-like. Because we can take a thought and create it and manifest it. Now you said we're supposed to be like nature-like. Right. You gotta explain that to them because I don't know if you know what, really what you mean by that. We appreciate nature. you, man. You know, nature-like. You know what I mean? Thank you. You know what I mean when they say nature-like? You know, see, that's we study. Okay. All right. There yes. You go. Yes. There you go. Right. So, right. Being one with nature, the Creator. We didn't have a word like God. God is a Gothic word, like dog backwards. So we didn't use that word. We used nature, which was we believe that the Creator was a, a, a mind. A conscious mind that controlled everything and nature is the manifestation of that mind so if you're nature like that's why we want to be one with nature you notice that the Europeans and the Asiatics are at war with nature yes. to us that would be crazy that's like being at war with the Creator so in fact if somebody's at war with nature you need to just get away from them okay so when the earth swallowed them <laughs> you won't be with them remember energy doesn't understand good and bad Energy just is. So I need people to understand. Energy does not understand good and bad. If you're good and your twin sister is evil and both of y'all stick your finger in the socket, both of y'all get electrocuted. Okay, all right. So the only way you defeat evil is prepare yourself to do battle with evil. So y'all marching up on some, trying to march up on freedom, singing up on some freedom. Nobody on the planet got their freedom that way. <laughs> Malcolm said you get your freedom from your enemy when you let your enemy know you'll do anything and the price of freedom is death they need to know that you will die for your freedom then you'll get it now if you want to sing a song after that that's fine okay All right. so thank you my brother um, I appreciate you one last time where can they get the book at and then we out of here again if you go on my website uh, www.infundishijahutimasmadunecha.com You can order both books, Spiritual Warriors Are Healers, or my latest book, again, on um, 
Minshew Hotep and Spiritual Wars in Yellow. Both of them. www. Hold on, hold on. Hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. www Or you can go on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble and order the book. And uh, now I still will get paid for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Nice. What's up, man? Appreciate you, my brother.